Hello, hello, hello. It is day 298 of From Here to Jerusalem. Walking from West Cork to Jerusalem with a harp on your back. I am a niche. No harp on my back. No Jerry this stick. Uh, today I am picking up uh, my friend Marcel, who's flying into Niche to spend a week with me <sighs> so I can rest. Because in the end, in Belgrade, I didn't really get to rest. This time I am. Uh, I arrived in the B&B where we are staying for the next uh, week yesterday <coughs> and uh, slept like a log, had a nice breakfast and I'm now, because you have to keep the, you have to keep the body limber, I'm walking out to the airport now. It's about seven and a half kilometers. That is like a nice and easy day. Yeah, yesterday evening I went out to dinner and um, met some of the locals, some of the, the people that live around here, uh, had some really nice food. Uh, there was this beef dish which was really spicy and the guy said, oh, it's really spicy and I was like, no, it's nice, it's nice and warm. And then he came with uh, <coughs> these peppers that are really, I had seen them hanging on one of the stalls as I walked here yesterday afternoon. And uh, he had uh, heated it, he would put it on the, on the grill and made it extra, extra. And he said, oh, you can't eat it. And I ate it. So we had a bit, we had a bit of a laugh. And um, then I met, uh, I met this, guy who's been working abroad on different uh, peacekeeping missions, a doctor <clears throat> and uh, his girlfriend. Oh my God, I had forgotten how this sometimes goes. So I'm talking to this man. His English is really good. Uh, we're having a really interesting conversation. And this poor woman, I don't know what happened to her, but she suffered a bout of jealousy, I think, and she did this thing that I haven't seen done in a long time. She was like, <clears throat> she, was, she was some kind of TikToker. Uh, she does these lives, videos, very pretty, beautiful, beautiful young woman. Like, here's this old bird, me, like, I mean, I'm not really interested in, uh, in, in anything. I'm just having a conversation over a beer and dinner. And she is like saying to me over, uh, over Google Translate, oh, the government man, he's like really into you and, uh, He's gonna go home with you and I'm going like, listen, I've got other things on my mind and she would not let go. She would not stop. And up to the point where it became really uncomfortable. I am like, oh, I'm into like women's solidarity. You know, sisters, the sisterhood. Um, my life does not revolve around men. Maybe it did a long time ago, but it definitely doesn't anymore. And uh, I just really felt very bad for her because she couldn't let it go. She was just overwhelmed by these feelings. In the end, like we cut the conversation short she was saying to this other man that he should be taking care of me. It, it was really uncomfortable. And I, I honestly, in that moment, I didn't know what to do. So this morning, of course, I woke up and I went, it was very clear. I should have just taken her aside and said, listen, darling, grow up. Like, <laughs> like do you know, 
don't behave like that because it's, it doesn't reflect very well on yourself. But I felt, I felt so bad for her. I felt really bad for her because she was, she was making a spectacle of herself. Not very loud, but then it got louder and louder and she was, and she was, she was lovely, like this insecurity. Ladies, you know, you're all beautiful. You're all very talented. You're all amazing. And it was obvious that this man was really into her. Like, it, it wasn't like he was... Uh, anyway, it, it, but I found it really shocking and it hasn't happened to me, uh, something like that, in a long time. And you could say on one hand, oh, you know, passion, you know, here we have passionate people and they feel very strongly. No, this is about not knowing, not, this is about insecurities and not knowing who you are and what you're capable of. It was, it was, uh, it was unfortunate. Anyway, that's all done. The food was great. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, having the company now for a few days. Somebody who, uh, who I'm familiar with and who knows who I am where I'm from, it'll be very, very, very nice. Uh, this morning, I got up for breakfast, had breakfast downstairs, it is like loud. Uh, it's a loud, loud place. <laughs> but it'll be fine, it'll be nice, the room is very comfortable. Uh, yeah, so what happened? What actually happened? How did I end up in niche? Yeah, in, in this, part between Belgrade and here. Um, one, I've been overwhelmed by how lovely people are, how friendly they are. Uh, <coughs> their kindness, their generosity. And on the other hand, I've been really shocked by some of the stories I've been hearing it's as if this is the thing with wars, yeah? It is as if, you know, we read the paper, we, re we read the papers, we get this information, and then you think you know what's going on. I've been having this feeling that something terrible happened in this part of the world. Like, literally, I'm watching part of this country it's desolated like it literally looks like people up and left and it's in a sense it's a credit to the serbians that nothing was touched when these people up and left nothing was touched afterwards so it's not like they went into the houses looted them you know like i've, I've seen in ireland many times you get these old cottages and uh you know, people go in, they take out the toilet, the, the, the whatever, whatever tiles are there, whatever they can use, and they take it out. Nothing is touched. And it's just it's this eerie kind of, kind of feeling. And I, you walk in and out of it. I don't know how to describe it, but I can feel it. I can feel it. And there is a real sadness in some of the people. So I ended up uh, in the last town, this one, and this man says, you know, he used to be strong and very able. We're having this really good conversation as I'm trying to find out how I'm going to walk out of there and how I'm going to get uh, to Alexander, Alexander Vach or Alexander there. And if I can get out of there, then because there are no beds, uh, and do I stay on 158 or do I go through the fields? And he tells me, 
oh, he doesn't want to talk about, you know, why he's not good and strong anymore. And then the story comes in the end that as part of his job in the army, he was in one of the areas that was bombarded with a depleted, uh, uh, depleted uranium bombs and he has had brain cancer, uh, like tumors growing. Yeah, he's still there and he's showing me photographs of his wife who's stunning and his daughter who's only 11 years old. And I'm just, it really, really fell wrong with me. Because I'm looking at him in the scar, they, they, they cut, like, we see cancer patients in Ireland a lot as well, yeah? Uh, and some areas more than other areas. Here the incidence of cancer is really, really high. And so the, the combination of the, the desolation of the place and the aftermath, it's one thing to have a war and to have casualties, to lose a war. But this is an aftermath that keeps on going. It keeps on giving. It keeps on giving sick children, people not being able to take up their lives. Healthcare system isn't great here. Like we think Ireland is, you know, has its issues. Uh, they have their issues here too. And like the friend who's sitting next to him, he's like the manager of the first, uh, like this, this treatment center that I walked by on the way in. It was very, very, like, I was, and it, I just got overwhelmed. And I, I'm listening to them and I'm thinking, I need to get out of here. So I take the, I take the, the, their advice, go to the bus station, get on a bus and get out of there. And I just came to, to Niche and I've been sitting with it and I'll have to breathe through it a little bit because it's, it just, you know, it kind of, it was like a puzzle. I was seeing all the pieces and I couldn't see how they were fitting together. And uh, there I could see the whole picture. And it was hard and I'd been hearing the day before I met this woman in the, in the petrol station and first I walk in there halfway on my way to Poyate and first she says uh, no sorry we're closed you can't have coffee and then I say I'm really sorry but I, I you know I'm on my way to Poyate on foot and I just I need to sit down for a little bit and then go on so if there is no coffee can I buy something else and just sit down and as we're talking Google Translate is doing its thing she goes of course you can sit down and you know what I'll make you a coffee and I'll sit down with you and I'll have a coffee with you and she tells me her story which is similar all her friends in their 40s are dying uh, they all have cancer. I always like say about my family, you know, the chances of us dying of cancer is like 99.9%. Uh, my mother didn't die of cancer, but on my father's side, they all died of cancer. <sighs> but I mean, in your 40s and like everybody and all those empty houses, you know, and as I'm sipping my coffee, and she's telling me her story, she says, do you want a sandwich? <laughs> and they give me like a burger sandwich thing. Then I'm walking on and uh, this young cyclist goes, here, have an energy bar. And these workmen stop and they give me an energy drink and then I meet Sasha and he says, do you want some fruit? And he runs into the house and he comes back with a big pot 
of plums and syrup. And all these people want to give and they all are talking about, you know, how amazing it is that there are people walking uh, pilgrimages. And I just feel so humbled because all I do is walk. But of course, there is a tiny bit more. I, I realized this morning that, of course, another part, and I talked about this quite a lot, I believe, when I was on my way to Rome, the other part of being on pilgrimage, and of course I have the music to offer, uh, which is like a tool as well. It's a, you know, it can help. And I've, I've seen it here as well, that every time that I play, there is a calm that sets in. So I have to do more of that. And it, my job is to witness, to see, to say this is, to see and say, to know that this is what happened here. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. Because it's important when people go through trauma, and we've seen this time and time again as well, uh, you know, people have to be able to tell their stories. And they need to be heard and they need to know that they're being heard. This is really, really important. It lifts some of the heaviness that people have around these events of trauma. So, yeah, by sharing, you know, my dad always used to say, sharing is that you carry half the load. And I realized that this is part of what's going on. So I wasn't really consciously busy with that part of the journey because I was so busy with the logistics of it. And uh, yeah, so now I'm, I'm kind of seeing how it all sits together. And uh, now that I'm aware of it, I can prepare for it a little bit better and really be present when these stories are being told. Uh, do you know, and I'm thinking about people where we live, you know. Everybody has anxiety and I'm, I don't wanna, I don't wanna talk it down. There, of course, there is stress. Uh, but I heard the Dalai Lama say there the other day, the antidote to this anxiety thing and, you know, depression is to show more compassion, to do, to be out there and do good upon others. If we cannot do it for ourselves, then we do it for others. And in that, it will come back and we will get more of a, of a feeling and a connection to the life that we are living. It's a, a lot to think about. A lot, a lot to think about. So, that's really all I wanted to say. That's what happened uh, to me. That's why I'm in Niche. I looked at the map this morning. There is about 60, 64, 65 kilometers left between Niche and where I stopped walking. So hopefully uh, Marcel will be off for a day or two of walking. I'm doing the bit to the... <laughs> well, no, I'm not because I'm not carrying the harp. Uh, yes, here we are. Uh, I hope he's up for the walk. I'm gonna go get there now, uh, catch up with uh, some phone calls, some people. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing some of the sights here. This is where, uh, what is it? What is his name again? Uh, 
see one of the Caesars. The first Christian Caesar uh, was born. He was born here. And his mother convinced him to change the national religion of the Romans to Christianity. They have a feast day here on the 3rd of June. Constantine. Constantine the Great. Uh, and his mother had a dream and she asked her son to become Christian. There's also uh, a, mem uh, a memorial which the, the Ottomans left, which is made out of skulls. Uh, this is on the Via Militaris. There's great history here. I'm looking forward to some of it. But above all, oh look, here they're ex excavating. You see that? I don't know what that looks like. It could be graves. I'd say it's an old graveyard. Uh, there are, there is definitely either medieval or medieval or uh, Roman uh, stonework. There. So, like I said, a city full, full of history. Uh, and also, I did not get to rest really in Belgrade because uh, I was ill and I was staying in a hostel. Uh, Marcel offered to come and make sure that I actually do rest. Uh, now, update on the weather. Baba Martha, she is, uh, she's giving us spring weather. So tonight it'll still freeze and then the temperatures will go up. The difference between here and Sofia is about two, three degrees. It's two, three degrees colder. And uh, I'll keep an eye on it. Uh, I have to uh, check my pack again, do some, uh, do some stitching, some sewing. Uh, I'd like to change the belt, uh, the bag I have on my belt. And then I'll be done, then I'll be ready to go. So, yeah, let me go do this walk. I've talked enough. Thank you for bearing with me. 298, just like that. <sighs> I'll see you later. <laughs>